All right, this video is called The Day I Stopped Trying to Play Like Tony Rice. And I remember the day. It was a very specific day. It was in November. I was in high school at a bluegrass festival in Illinois. And we were playing a song, Gold Rush, you know, with a large group of people. And uh, I was sitting right next to a buddy of mine. And it came time to play uh, what I thought was my break, and he thought it was his break. And we both started playing at the same time. And we both played the exact same version of Gold Rush at the same time. And it's because we had learned it off the Tony Rice, uh, probably instructional video is where I learned it from. He probably did too. And we got about two measures in, and I just realized, oh my gosh, I, I have to learn something different. I can't keep trying to play like Tony Rice. I can't keep going down this path. And then I, all of that contains too, like, well, how do you do that? What do you learn? Like, who, do, who else do I listen to? What else do I play? You know, I'd spent so much time and energy and listening, just learning how to play that. I was like, what's next? And so that started me on a path of trying to find a different way to play. And, uh, uh, you know, the bluegrass style is full of innovators. It's not full of copycats. It's full of, you know, Earl Scruggs, Bill Monroe, Tony Rice, Vassar Clements, Sam Bush, Chris Thiele, Adam Steffi. All these guys are innovators in adding something to the music. You know, Grisman. They're not guys that, uh, you know, played like the guy before them. You know, and so I, I wanted to be a part of that. Like, I wanted to, to, you know, my dad stressed, you know, playing like yourself. Be yourself when you play music. And like limitations and all, you know, be yourself. And so, uh, so that was the path I started down. And I started listening to other guitar players. I liked the guy from New Tradition. His name was Kenny. Fred Duggan was there first. He was great too. But then there was a guy named Kenny who was really good. And then, uh, what was the other band? Well, I started listening to Greer. He was, you know, different, but played with an equal level of tone, I thought. And I started listening to his albums. And that was another path because then I, I started trying to play too much like that. And, you know... But it, it, on that journey, you start to find your own sound. So I thought of some things that we could take from Tony Rice that aren't necessarily like his licks. And uh, so the first one I have down is uh, the concept of tone. Uh, if you listen to what came before and then you listen to his albums, you can tell that he placed a really high value on the sound of the guitar, even before he got the, you know, the mythical you know, antique guitar or whatever, but, but uh, it's just a great sound. So you can tell he's really trying to play with a great sound. And I read in that book that he had about how, you know, he said to his engineer, Billy Wolf, who uh, said, you know, he wants it to sound more like a Spanish guitar, you know, not so ticky-tacky, but wanted to bring that thickness out of that. And uh, you can hear that on the albums, how it just, it's a different sound, you know, it's a, big guitar sound. Um, you know, the other thing he had um, was just the idea of being an innovator. You know, I heard him say in an interview once that, you know, if you want to be an innovator, you don't listen to your own genre. So that's interesting, you know. So you start listening to different kinds of music and you bring that in. Um, and bluegrass is a kind of music that, that can take other kinds of music in it. It can take some jazz, and it can take blues, and it can take classical. It can take a lot of different things that you bring into it. Sam Bush brought reggae into bluegrass. You know, it's a lot of different styles can be absorbed into that style. Uh, but then, uh, you know, the idea of blazing your own trail, finding your own path, I think that uh, Tony Rice, you know, is an innovator, and so that encourages me that I want to be an innovator. Um, his aggressiveness, like how he plays, like, uh, he's so aggressive, like he's so, like, it's just that, you know, it's just like, <clears throat> he's got that, that pop to his playing, like, I want to add some aggressiveness to my playing, you know, but then on the opposite side, he's got the sweetness, you know, you listen to an album like Native American, or you listen to, one of my favorite songs is I Think It's Gonna Rain Today, which is on the Cold on the Shoulder album. Just, just a gorgeous piece of music. So it's not just like, oh, it's all blues licks all the time. It's like, no, it's a full range of emotion, a full range of music. You know, Jimmy Page said, from the whisper to the thunder. 
Uh, you know, it's a full range of expressiveness. So I want to have that in my playing. Not to exactly play every song he plays or every way, but I want to add that, that range. I love the blues playing, so I can add blues into my playing. Uh, and overall, I think his a playing is like, it grooves. Whether it's rhythm, you know. He's a great rhythm guitar player, so I can add great rhythm guitar. I can't copy his rhythm exactly. I'm not quite sure what he's doing. But I can copy the concept like, I'm going to place that level of importance on the rhythm so that the rhythm guitar is really grooving, is really popping. Because that's what you're doing 90% of the song anyway, right? There's a couple um, things I read over the years that I can take from him. One thing I heard him say in a, in a magazine was, if you can hear it, you can play it. And I knew what that meant was that if you can hear that in your mind, you can play it. Like if you can hear something, you, so you can... Like, oh, I think the song should go here. You might not know how to get it to there, but you could keep searching and you could find it. And uh, I heard him say to uh, Happy Traum on the instructional video, you know, he said, what well, must take a lot of practice? And he looked at him and said, it's trial and error. So it's like, oh, you could, you know, there's a lot of trial and error in learning how to play. You try something, you're searching. So I could take that from Tony Rice. Um, a couple really funny things. Um... You know, if you're, for, for the, the whole concept of trying to play exactly like Tony Rice or trying to be like Tony Rice, um, I, I, a lot of people don't realize how popular he was. Um, and, like, I want to tell a couple of things. Like, back in the 80s and 90s, he was so popular that if you went to any bluegrass festival, there'd be, like, two or three guys there that had his model guitar with the big sound hole that they had like a bracelet on, like Tony would wear. They had, um, you know, maybe a suit on like he would wear. They had their hair cut or their beard cut like he would have. And this is just to go to a festival and hang out and play music and jam. This is not, like, they're not going on stage like that. Like, they're just hanging out. <laughs> like, it was so popular. It's like if you, you know you went to see Michael Jordan play and you had on a number 23 jersey, it's like, well, you're not, you know you're not getting in the game. You know, you're just sitting in the stands. It's like, yeah, but I got my jersey on. Like, they had their Tony Rice outfit on and their Tony Rice guitar, which is cool, I guess, but, like, uh, it's kind of funny thinking back to it. And there, there's so many guys to, that, that do play like that. And I, like I said, I've been one of them. I had the Tony Rice... I've got a picture where I'm posing like Tony Rice, okay? My senior picture in high school. Someday I'll bring that out, but not yet. I've got, uh, you know, I had the videos, I had the tap books, and I learned a lot from it. And I think it's good to learn those licks, too. I would, I would say learn them and then add them into your own plan. Don't learn them and start a cover band, <laughs> you know. Don't learn them and then play them exactly like that. Learn, a, learn the Tony Rice lick and then add it into your own style. Change a few notes. You know, that's what you're supposed to do with that. You're not necessarily supposed to learn it and go do it exactly. I think the best Tony Rice player would probably be like the best Elvis impersonator. Like that guy, that guy in the white jumpsuit over there, you see that? He has that Elvis? No man, that's the best Elvis impersonator in the world. What? Who cares about the best Elvis impersonator? Like, look, what does that matter? I would say, too, it'd be like, you know, the best imitation grandma. Like you wake up at your grandma's house, and there's another lady there that's not your grandma. Like, are you going to accept that? Like, she brings you cookies. What, what did you do with Grandma? I'm your Grandma. I'm Grandma. Here's the cookies. Like, you're not Grandma. Like, you don't want a fake anything. And so, like, you don't want the fake Tony Rice. You want the real Tony Rice. But they, I'll tell you what. They also don't want the fake you. They want the real you. So, on that path of learning how to play and learning how to sing and learning how to, how to do this stuff, like, it's also a path of trying to figure out who you are and what you like and what you do best. And it may not be that the Tony Rice style is for everybody. I love, he's still my favorite guitar player. I still get excited listening to those albums, but I can't play like that. It's not for me to do that, you know. So, those are some of the things, like, I, I learned growing up and learned playing and learned from the musicians around me that were really good. Um, just kind of about being yourself and, and like it is a journey because if you're going to play something 
that somebody didn't play or that you got off a piece of tab, which is nothing wrong with that, then it's a journey to do that. And so uh, it's fun. That's, that's the fun part. So good luck. Have fun. Uh, let me know what you thought about this video. It's a little different. I'd kind of like to do some more of these. Um, like, subscribe, and comment, and uh, we'll see you next time.